All right, so um, tangent line approximation, and then, or at least in that scenario. All right, here's another one where they gave you the function's value at four, the derivative function's value at four, the second derivative function's value at, at four, and they said if the line tangent to the graph of f at four is used to approximate the function at 4.1, then what is the approx the net approximation would be what? So I went and said, well, what does this give me? The point. The point, so x minus the four, y minus the three, what does that give me? Plug like the slope in, there's my equation of a line. You got two points for doing that. You plug a negative, uh, plug a four, 0.1 in to that tangent line that's going to be approximating the value in for x and simplify it and get 2.8. So even if you, if all you do is guess and you guess C correctly, you're going to get a point. All right, now in an AP test, you would have gotten the 1.2 points that that's worth because they don't care about your work. But on my test, I would give you the point for guessing, but you're not going to get the three for showing the work. Yes? So multiple choice on the AP test is just the answer? Just the answer. Multiple choice on the test you're going to have is just any answer? Correct. And it's mainly because I want, I really don't want to give any multiple choice right now. I really want to make it all free response okay. and grade you, but I want to start getting you into the habit of seeing the multiple choice. So I put a lot more, I don't put multiple choice hardly at all in pre-cal and algebra two. I mean, maybe on an exam to make my life a little easier. And then even then when I go and grade it, if I grade all the multiple choice and you got destroyed, I go back and grade it manually to see, and then I, I pick, give you the best of the two. That's normally what I do on an exam. But on the AP test, yeah, if, if you just randomly guess, and you're right, Merry Christmas. Sad thing is, if you do everything right and then make one small error like slope or whatever, you're gonna miss it all. So you gotta be careful, but I wanna expose you to that, so I tend to give a lot of multiple choice questions on my tests. But I'm always, when I'm grading it up until the end of the year when we review, I'm gonna be grading the work on all of them. Are you with me on that? So make sure, and I'll usually give you, I've been doing the little slash dot, dot, dot stuff, but this marks the chapter I start getting away from that. And I'm most of the time from here on out, I'm gonna have point values on every problem. And you'll see it on this test. You'll see number one, eight points. Number two, seven points. Number three, nine points or whatever. And you'll see that as I go through. And it's not gonna add to 100. I think this particular one adds to like 58, right? And then I take that 58, and I stretch it out to 100, if that makes any sense. That does not mean a 42 point scale. That means I do a ratio like 42 over 58 equals X out of 100, and I do a little ratio. And I think I even built in a four point scale on this one. So just know that when I miss one point on your test, it's really an inflated one point, right? It's one point on that problem, but when I stretch 58 out to 100, it ends up being like 1.75. So every point is a, is a jarring blow, okay, I guess. Are y'all with me? But I do have a, a four point scale built in um, to, the, uh, to the actual results. So if you got them all right, you'd make like a 10. Actually, if you get, yeah, you make a 104, if you got whatever. If you really got a 56, you'd make a 60. It makes it always gonna bump it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right, and then the last question was, and I've asked this once before, without actually finding the approximation, and using the information above, um, it says, how can you tell whether the approximation at x equals 4.1 is over an over approximation or an under approximation? It's concave. It's con what's concave up? Uh, yeah, yeah the, the actual function is concave up. Well, what does that do with the tangent line then? It puts it below the function. So any approximation that the, that the uh, tangent line gave me would be below the actual function since it was concave up, which would make it an under approximation. Y'all get that? Those, these are the kinds of questions that you steal from the eight. Those are the ones that are like, ooh, we'll trick them up. But I've taught this long enough now that are all spinning around in my head and I show you all of them. It's just a matter of remembering that kind of stuff. But that's an, actually a very good question and it's always like the, the, ninth quest, the ninth point on a big free response or, or whatever. But just remembering what that means and what tangent lines mean and with respect to that is helpful. Yes? So would it ever ask you to explain it? And when you explain it, can you just like draw a picture and like say like? I think that's probably fine. But I, if you just say, because the, the uh, der second derivative is positive, okay. then it's concave up and say tangent lines to a concave up region would occur below. Just so, you don't probably have to write what I just did, 
But, uh, or you could just say tangent lines are always below concave up regions, or tangent lines to a point on a concave region are always below. So do we have to say it's because the second derivative is positive or just say we know it's concave up? I would probably state why you know it's concave up. Yeah, link it to that. You know, because second derivative uh, of 4 equals 7 is positive, it's concave up, therefore tangent lines are under approximation. And you see enough of that, they, they see enough of that where they're, they're tracking with you and they'll, they'll know what you're saying. Okay, and then shifting to the optimization stuff. And I think on the quiz I gave you today, it was all optimization maybe. But that doesn't mean I'm like, oh, forget about tangent line approximation. Don't forget to study for that on your test on Tuesday. So on this one, it said if square corners are cut out, so the, the, the red is gone, which means that's not there anymore. And then along the dotted lines, I'm folding it up. What said 10 by 15 piece of cardboard. So that's 10, that's 15. If each of those are x's, that's a 10 minus 2x. Every year I have somebody write 10 minus x. And they lose these two points here. And then if they do everything else right, they're going to lose that and then these two, or at least two of the six. Don't let that happen. You've seen enough of these. This is at least the second time you've seen it. Um, so length, width, height. And then don't forget to say all the stuff, right? V is maximized here because the derivative is 0 at x equals 1.962 and because the derivative goes from plus to minus here. And then of course answer the question which was, what is the maximum volume? Right? Right. And then finally, determine the closest distance between a point and that graph. And if you think about this, the closest distance will be whatever line makes that a perpendicular. All right, to that. But a distance, if I'm looking for closest distance, that's minimum distance. Write out the distance formula, because technically you're finding the distance between these two points. So that's my distance formula. I know one point, I'm gonna plug it in. And then all I have now, once I plug that four in, I need to get rid of that y. Man, if only I knew what y was. Damn, I do know what y is. So y is that equation. I plug that in, and now I don't even, at this point, I'm not gonna try to simplify. There's not even a point of accidentally writing that as two. You can if you want. I mean, totally fine if you want, but don't, if you're even remotely unsure about the algebra, like, am I allowed to cancel that? Then don't. You'd be shocked what eight people allow. Like, for instance, if your final answer was this, you can leave that as an answer and you will be correct. You do not even have to distribute. Now, if it's multiple choice, you might have to to find your answer. But on a free response, you can leave it like that if you want to. So if you are remotely concerned with your simplifying, don't, okay? Unless again, it's multiple choice, yeah. Um, you plugged in 4, 4 into the x1, y1. You gotta plug it into the x2, y2. Sure, but that puts you a little bit more risk because if I plug a 4, 4 there, then when I plug that in for y, I've gotta remember to distribute that negative or put it in the parentheses. Right. And then, and so to me, that would be a little bit extra risk involved. So I always like to plug the point there and then plug the function there because there's always a, a plus in front. I don't have to worry about any kind of distributing issues. It's just a safer place for me. Yes? Did, did you round it all when plugging in that 1.647? Um, I don't know. In my heart, I would like to believe I didn't. But some of my keys are old. Because mine was like 0.1 off that. Kind of did you get that? And you were exact all the way? Yeah, I got that. Okay. Yeah. And remember, if that's a round up, did this round up to that? Do you remember? Remember, remember you can truncate or round. So if it was like if the real number was point, or point 0.4587, then you're allowed to truncate, which means 2.458, or you're allowed to round to the 9. So you're allowed to do both, So I don't, but I, don't, I have no memory of that. That worksheet that y'all were talking about that had the second derivative, yeah. I went back and checked the date. The last time I looked at it was 2012. Wow. So y'all were what, nine? Eight. Yeah, it was a while ago. That's why I had no memory of it. So I went and updated it and I got the newer one on there. Um, and I'm not saying that's bad to use the second derivative, but to me, if it's manual, that's an extra level of mistake that you could make. You know what I mean? Because you now have to take the second derivative. And sometimes the second derivative is really ugly. So anyway or whatever that's for. So plug it back in, 2.4. And if I was plugging it back in, if I had an 84, I would have already had that saved as an x. I would have just come back and my, your function is what, y1? 
I would have gone to the calculate part and just gone y1 of x and it spits that out. If I had an inspire, your function would have been f1. Uh, I would have stored that as an a and I would have done f1 of a and it would have spit that up. So don't ever bother trying to put that back in this original one. It's just a waste of time, in my opinion. Y'all with me? All right, y'all feeling good about this stuff? So my guess is at this point, most people, not all, but most people are at the point they're like, okay, I got the process down. So when it comes to studying, make sure you have the process down because if you forget one step, you forget that. That's minus one off every problem. So if you miss minus one off eight problems, that's minus eight. And remember, it's gonna get stretched. So it's really minus 15. Are y'all seeing that? That's a lot of minus for forgetting one topic. But that's the downside of this test. Actually, that's not true because probably one or two of the problems will be tangential on approximation. But on the optimization stuff, you're gonna miss one of all of those. And there's probably gonna be, I don't know, nine, no more than 10 questions. So you're gonna to have to do optimization a number of times, probably two tangent line approximations. Oh, and also there is a calculator part. The first page is gonna be three problems that's non-calculated. And then when you flip, no. Yeah, that's non-calculated. And then when you flip over to the second page and the third page, that's calculated. So I wanna see that you can do one of these with a manual derivative like manually calculating it, which is not a brutal one. Some of the homework problems I gave you were brutal algebra, it's not. Um, but it is some algebra. But, um, but even if you do struggle with the algebra, show these comments, show that, show that. You can steal points and even if you got lost in the algebra, you can minimize the damage. And when you're doing it manually, that's when you need to either use the uh, line test or like the EBT to like prove instead of just like Correct, the because when you graph it, you're seeing the analysis. Yes, you just run out. Right, see. because you see the graph, you can see it going from negative to positive. When you can't see the graph, you do the analysis so you can check it going from positive to negative. But when you can see it, there's no point of that. You're like, oh, look, I saw. I checked it. I saw it. Even if you didn't see it and you didn't pay attention. But you, you, I mean, listen, there are some people every year that don't know how to set up the equations. But they still go, hey, the derivative equals zero and x equals blank. D is minimized here because it goes from negative to positive, because D prime goes from negative to positive. And they still steal one, two points. And sometimes they can even get partial credit out of some of this stuff. So do that if it comes down to it. But anyway, y'all good? Okay, one more little review of quiz for you. But I wanted to do a couple of different problems. Actually, a couple of these are repeats. Um, sort of repeats. So right here, this is, uh, I want to say page 27. Now this particular one was an old AP question. I, it is actually, this, this part of it was a small part of the AP question. There was more to it than this. And I was always annoyed, but this is what AP does. They always try to make it look annoyingly difficult when it's not annoyingly difficult. Like they'll say, a rectangle of length 2K is inscribed between the x-axis, that, and the graph of the cosine curve, y equals cosine x. Now does that look like a cosine x to you? No. no. To me it does, but it, I mean it kind of looks like a parabola at first, or maybe a part of a semicircle. But remember cosine starts high, goes down to here, right, and then comes back up high? Oh, yes. Now where do you think that is? Pi. Think about it. Pi it takes pi halves, because it takes two pi to complete a regular cosine curve. You remember that? Yes. So at the first quarter, before you get to the bottom, that quarter would be one-fourth of two pi or pi over two. So that's worth noting when it comes to setting up your calculator. Because if pi over 2 is like what? 3.14 divided by 2? That's like 1.56 on your calculator. If my calculator goes from 0 to 10, like or negative 10 to 10 like it normally does, how many times are you going to be crossing? A, A ton. That's why you want to limit it. Because if I'm trying to maximize area, you're going to see it maximized a bunch of places when you do a derivative curve. Because the derivative of a cosine is a what? A negative sign. Now it's going to be a little bit different because that's not the function of area, but it's going to be in there. So be careful to think about, when you think about your, your domain to set up your window, even if you don't know exactly what it is, try to get it as close as possible so you don't see any extra crosses 
that could mess with you. All right, so let's take a look at it. The length is 2K. So that tells you that this length is 2K. Does the K part bother you? No. To me, the K is the same as what? Is the X. So don't let that bother you. That 2K is the same thing as me saying 2X. So if you want to for now, say let K equal X for the rest of your work, you could probably get away with that. I'd be confident you could get away with it. So how do I maximize area of this rectangle? So we know area equals length times width, and the length is, and if you want, 2x. But if you want to go k, that's, I'll, I'll, I'll go k, 2k. And the width is the same thing as the height, right? And what's the height? There you do, it's y. And y is cosine x. Good. But in this case, when you put that in there, you're like, wait. K and X, well, that's why I let K equal X, I think is a better idea, because you still have to make the variables match. So the K there is just to mess with you and try to get you confused. But don't assume the position, just do what's logical to you. Now, you'll notice this is the area curve. This is what I'm graphing. And X cosine X is not gonna look like a cosine curve, right? But it's gonna have some kind of cosine action going on. All right, so here we go. The derivative of this, we're going to do this uh, non-manually. So the derivative is 0 at x equals, and when you set your window up, if you're asking me, I'm going to still keep it not super big, right? Because when you look at this, the cosine is going to end at pi over 2. I'm not going to make it go bigger than that. So here I go here. So I'm going to go menu, window, settings from 0 to 2 will probably do it. Really, 1.6 might even be better. And then I'm going to go tab, and I've got 2x times. And it's probably a good idea to put times if you have an inspire, because, um, because sometimes you get those where it doesn't recognize stuff. If you, if you, have, if you know it's times, put an extra times in there. And that's my function, but I really don't care where it crosses. What I care about is what? Where the derivative crosses. So I'm going to now do the derivative. Some of you have that kind of permanently saved in there, which is fine. F1 of x, and here is my derivative. And sure enough, you can see the derivative is crossing right below where the function was maximized, which makes sense, right? Because the derivative is going from positive to zero to negative. So I say that the derivative equals zero at x equals, and what did y'all get? So which graph? That one, that one. So 0 0.860, and I'm gonna store that personally as A. So 0 0.860. Right, and A is maximized here. Here, because what? A prime goes, and you see it right here, from plus to minus. And if you, if this was manual, you would have, it would have been a bigger mess when you do first and second plus second and first. I don't think you could have solved that manually. But if you had been able to solve it manually, of course you would have done a number line analysis and checked to see what the derivative was doing, but you can see it here. So we just state that we saw it, and then we gotta go answer the question. And what is the question? There's two questions. For what value of k does it have a maximum area? So what would that be? k was x, 0.860. And then what is that maximum area? And don't say area equals, say either maximum area, because that's what you're doing, because the area could be any, a lot of different things. Say either maximum area or say this, A of 0 0.860. So either one of those would probably be fine, or I would think would be fine. So, um, so I'm gonna go back to my screen and just go bars F1 of A, 
or you could do y1 of x if you were on an 84 and 1.72. Anybody get that? Yeah. yeah. 1.720. And that is area, and they didn't give me units, so it probably doesn't matter, but if you're a perfectionist, I guess you could go unit squared. It actually is carbon, but you're so in so close that it looks like it's straight. And guys, hey, make sure that you're in radians. If you're in degrees, everything's different. Well, in radians, it is one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wait, am I wrong? Oh, I am wrong. Oh, wow. Wait, what happened? Wait, hold on. My calculus, like, my graphing one's in radians, but then my left one's in radians. Now I'm wrong. Yeah, you're, I'm wrong. What job, one point, what was it, one? It was one point, one, two, two. Yeah, okay, let me, let me take a quick, thank you. Let me take a quick break from that to talk to you about settings. <laughs> what I did? <laughs> I destroyed what? <laughs> hey guys, check it out. There are two settings for angles, okay? You gotta know this. There's a setting for the work pad that you're on, and there's also a setting for the actual graph. Now my graph setting, was correct. You can see that if you go menu, settings, and you can see I was on radians. So I was graphing it correctly. The problem was, I, uh, that's, the, that's when you're on the graph, when you can stare at the graph, right here, there are my graphs, you, you don't look at the top. That top part right there where it says rad, right here, you can see run right there. Mine, mine said degree a second ago, but it's still on the right setting because that doesn't go with this. That goes with the calculator part, with you're just calculating stuff. So if you want to change settings on your graph right here, go menu, eight, and change it to radians. If you're on the calculator part where you actually do calculations, you change those settings up here. Now you guys who have newer calculators with the white screens, I think you can just click on radian and change it to degree. Mine, if you have an older one like mine with the black screen, you gotta click on that gear and then go to document settings, and then change that one to radian. So just understand that there are two settings there, and y'all just caught me up my mistake on one. Um, I will do a lot of heavy reminding to you guys in May about, man, make sure your calculator is right. And normally I actually go to the test before you start and say, everybody, radians. But if they do it like they did two years ago, where they test you up at Sanford, which is probably what they're gonna do, probably get you up there where they can spread you out or whatever. The bus. Yeah, bring you up there on the bus if you remember that from a couple years ago. If you, have like yeah. eight yeah. Yeah. if you go up there, guys, I can't go up there because I, <laughs> I don't ride the bus with you if I have classes, and I do. So you guys, somebody, remember, and I'll remind you again, but somebody stand up and go, radiance, because nothing is in degrees on this test, which is annoying because in physics you do use degrees. No, you got it. But you got to remember to change your calculator. <laughs> yeah. Does radiance on your graph class affect any No, it's only when you happen to be using a trick function. So, like, if I had been doing this problem and that was a parabola, it wouldn't affect anything because there's no trick function involved. But there's a cosine involved. So, what it just did, it, I was in degree mode. So, when they did cosine, they thought x was an actual, uh, was an actual degree. So like less than one degree is a whole lot different than halfway there, right? That's a whole lot different measure um, because this is 1.56 on a radian. So 0.86 would have been maybe right there. So that's a totally different situation. So do be careful about that. Okay, um, look, this next one we're just talking about, that should be a repeat also. Um, it says a rectangular page is to contain 50 inches of print. Um, so be careful when you set these up. 
A lot of times, I know you guys may not be Did great. You square inches in Fifty. Yeah, I should have said square inches. Yes. Fifty square inches of print. So what that means is I've got some piece of paper. It's a rectangle, square. I don't know, something like that. Okay, some some kind of rectangle. And there's print on the inside right here that'll be used, but the margins are to be left blank. And it says one inch on the top. So this part right here is one. And bottom is one. And then on the sides. Yeah, shouldn't the ones be on the oh I guess it's whichever. So right here, 1.5 inches on the left. So all of that width, all the way down. 1.5, 1.5, all the way down. Make sure you get that label right. And then here, all these are ones. And then this in the inside is 50 inches squared. Now at this point, it is your decision how you want to label this, okay? It says find the dimensions of the page, so I'm going to use the least amount of material. Some people call all of this X, maybe, and all of that Y. And if that's the case, then this inside part would be what? Be careful about the inside part. What would this be? X minus 3. X minus 3, and then this part would be? Y minus 2. Y minus 2 right however some people do this they like to call the inside part x and y so if i call this x and y then what would this be x plus three, x plus three and this would be y plus two which obviously means when you're solving this, you might get a different X than I will. Well, I have the problem worked twice on my key, so however you set it up, that's how I grade it. So you'll get the same points. Now, I don't know what's the best thing. It doesn't matter, where, where are y'all leaning? The first one or the second one? Second. Second one, well, well, good both. So here's the second one. Find the dimensions of the page so that the least amount of paper. Well, the paper is the whole thing, right? So I would be minimizing area, and area would be what to begin with? X plus 3 times Y plus 2. But that still leaves me two variables. So in this case, XY equals 50. And if XY, and this is probably the way I did it, then Y would be 50 over X. And I plugged 50 over X in there. And that's probably worth two points to set that up. And at this point, you just do the math again. Now this one, I'm gonna do it man. I said calculator, but watch this manually. So if that's A, and I was about to take the derivative, I could do first to second plus second to first, but to me, it might be easier to foil it all out. So let's just see. If I foiled it all out, I would get 50 plus 2x plus 150 over x plus six. Is everybody with me on that? Yeah. That's a 50, because the x's would cancel. That's a two x. That's a 150 over the x, and that's a six. Right? And then this gives me what? 56. Because uh, I just wanted to do something different. I know it says calculator, and that'd be fine if it said that, but I just wanted to show you a different uh, what would happen if it was a non-calculator or if it was a problem? Because I haven't done a lot with calculator and there will be one on your test. So right here, now that I have that, what would the derivative be? Well, 56 is going to disappear. disappear. 2x is going to become a 2. 2. And then how do I take a derivative of a fraction? Now, I know a lot of you go, oh, you change that to x to the negative 1. Fine. And you're going to get, if you do, you get negative 150x to the negative 2. But then you're going to have to solve, and I don't, I'd rather not have it. So what I'm going to do is just take the derivative using the quotient rule, but I'm not going to write everything. I'm going to go low d high. What's the d high? Zero. So I'm not writing any of that. And then I go minus high d low, which is one, so that's it there, over the low square. 
And once I have the derivative, that'd be like you graphing it. What do I do? I go, well, let's set it equal to zero and find out where X occurs. Now, as ugly as that may look right now, how do you think you would solve that equation? You could, but what I'll probably do is just add that over. And then I'm gonna cross multiply and get two X squared equals 75 which gives me x squared equals 75 over two. And then when I square root that, I get x equals that. And AP Dude, count. Two well, x squared equals 75. It should be 75. Oh, sorry, equals 150. Sorry. And then when I divide, doing too much at one. And then divide by two, I get 75. And so I get x equals root 75. And I'm not gonna simplify that because I don't need to, this is AP calculus. Should it be plus or minus? Absolutely. Well, no, no it's yes, not, it's, you it's, have it's a minus constant. Right here, you can't have a negative length. Ah, uh, yes. Normally, I would say plus or minus, but because I'm thinking about my feasible domain, I know that x has to be uh, between zero and something, right? Mm -hmm. so, um, so I'm ignoring the negative stuff. Now, I still can't just say, hey, a prime is minimized. Okay, I can't say a prime equals zero. I already said that. But I, have to, I would have to be able to check to see if it's minimized here. And how do I check? And this is a lot easier than you think. I do a little number line. Look, it's much easier than you think. Because 75 is approximately what? Um, 8 squared is 64. 9 squared is 81. So 8 and a half ish. Go with me. So just check 8, something smaller. And check, so check eight in the derivative, check nine in the derivative. <clears throat> and if I check eight in here, right there I get 64. What's 150 over 64? Just ballpark it. Bigger, bigger than two. So what's two minus a number bigger than two? And then what's nine in there? 81. In fact, if you don't like that, plug 20. A little bit less than two. All right, it's definitely less than two, right? If I have a 91 in there, it's, it's a little bit more than a half. Two, that's a positive. Boom. And, and it was probably going to do that anyway, right, on a minimize, if you're really unsure. Um, so it's minimized here because A prime goes from negative to positive here. All right? And then the last thing you have to do is find the dimensions of the page. It didn't say find the maximum area. So what would be the dimensions? So you could say the, uh, what do we call this? The base or the width would be root 75 plus three. I almost find it invigorating to not simplify. Uh, and then the height, or the length, or whatever you were calling it, the height would be y plus 2, which is essentially that. So you could put 50 over root 75 plus 2. And leave it, because we don't care about rationalizing denominators. That's for children in pre -cal. Yes. Y'all with me? Yeah, of course. And again, why would you want to risk Looking at that, you could, you could potentially write 5 root 5 by mistake, right? When it's really 5 root 3. Uh -oh. You rationalize, you might make another mistake. Like, again, you don't have to simplify as much as you've been trained to do that in AP Cat. Again, if it's multiple choice and you got to find the answer, then do what you got to do. But, uh, but not, not typically. What are we thinking? Uh, yeah. yeah. All right, so do this quiz when you come in on Monday. We'll go through it again. You can grade it yourself. Um, and honestly, do be honest with yourself. Don't get help with this. Figure out what you know. It'll give you kind of a gauge. And if you haven't yet, I think there's some extra homework maybe too. But if you haven't yet, go through those old other problems and make sure you would at least know how to set them up. Because if you don't do that, your best case scenario is like two out of seven, three out of eight, that kind of stuff. Yeah, whatever you mentioned, you're talking about. So you might say, uh, 